Hey gang, Zippo. I've had ah, quite a few requests on uh, vertical shaft engines and the Chocomatic uh, type of deal that's you push through your uh, throttle cable all the way forward and it opens the throttle body all the way up, throttle body, opens the carburetor all the way up and then chokes it for your initial start. Um, and Grumpy, this one's for you, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and post it public because I've had uh, some other people ask about the same thing. So um, I hope this answers everybody's questions. I'm going to try to go through how everything works and how everything should be set up, what springs should be where, so on and so forth. Show the actual action. Um, and I'm not real prepared. Yeah, I guess I can probably shine a flashlight in there. It'll be all right. Okay, first off. Let's get a look here at the uh, throttle block where you attach your cable. Okay, what is supposed to happen when you push the throttle all the way forward? Well, push the throttle all the way forward. This actually draws back. When it draws back, it comes up, and you see this little flap up here. That flap makes contact with this looped bar just a piece of wire. I'm going to get in there a little closer so you can see it. See that looped wire right there? That is attached to your choke. So when you push it, it closes your choke. When you reduce your throttle, it opens the choke back up. Now these are pretty much designed that as soon as you hear the pop and it fires, you immediately draw back off of it a little bit, slowly open the choke, and then you're off and running. Um, so, I'm going to show you with the throttle cable. As I pull, you'll see this arm come up. Up, 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 up. Makes contact with that wire bar. The more you push, the more it pushes on that and it closes the choke. Okay? Now I'm going to come around and if I've got enough light, I'm going to show you the springs and uh, all that. Sorry about all the bouncing around. I got my tripod and I'm trying to position everything real well so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Yep, another Zippo generic video. <laughs> okay, let me get a flashlight here. Of course, it's not where I left it. There we go. Okay, now, you see that spring right there? That spring at the bottom of that spring is attached to the governor arm. Okay, if you look right here, that is your governor arm right there. Okay, that's the top of it. Now, mounted to the top of that is a small diameter spring that goes through that little bar. It's actually on that bar. I'm going to see if I can get that in the picture here. Hang on just a second. That's a pretty good shot there. You can see it. Okay, I'm going to move that bar. I can't talk because I'm going to put the flashlight in my mouth. But I'm going to move that bar. And when I do, you'll see that little spring right there. It just follows along with that bar that goes to the throttle butterfly. Okay. So now you can see that. There's my ceiling. Okay, let me get back over here and get some light in the subject. Okay, there you can see the whole throttle arm. It's mounted down low on the engine. And you set these the same way that you set the throttle arm on my carburetor rebuild and uh, um, get throttle arm, listen to me, governor arm, um, on my governor setup for the horizontal brakes. Same thing. It, it, it works the same way. Just imagine setting this engine up on this area right here. You'll set it the same way. Okay? So, we got the looking in there. We can see our spring right here. It's got tension on it. And it's attached right down there, like I say, to your governor arm. 
Wait, excuse me. That was pleasant, was it? Wasn't it? Let me just finish that off. <laughs> All right, we're done. <laughs> um, that's pretty gross. My female subscribers, ignore that. I'm a redneck. Okay. Now I'm going to show you when I let off of the throttle. As I let off of the throttle, you just watch that spring right there. That spring is going to come back down. Kind of comes at an angle. Okay, now right now in that position, there is no tension on that spring whatsoever. None. Um, you're at low idle. That's where your low idle mixture screw on my horizontal carb, or excuse me, my vertical carb adjustments comes into play. You want it to idle, you need to make those two adjustments. Adjust your idle mixture screw and adjust your throttle plate set screw so that you're running at about 1100 RPM at idle. Um, to know what 1100 RPM is at idle, best thing to do is to put a voltage rate, excuse me, voltage meter on, and just make sure that your alternator or your stator and whatnot is is charging at idle. Um, some, you know, I've got a couple engines that'll charge at 800 RPM, you know, but just make sure it charges. Um, another way that you can do it is to take a light bulb and a socket and plug it into the I've got the, wire, you know, the wires over here. And you're going to have different types of wires depending on what type of uh, stator setup, alternator setup you've got. But what you'll want to do, the red wire, attach a uh, pin to just the red wire, and then ground the engine, run the engine. And if you have a dim light, you want to increase the speed until your light comes up to a constant glow and stays at a constant glow and then back your screw off till it just barely dims then come back in a half a turn then you'll be sure that when your engines running at idle speed you're still charging your battery these engines have a magneto they do not require a coil in the typical sense like a battery ignition coil they produce their own energy so if I was to put a battery on this engine to start it take the battery off it would continue running indefinitely until it ran out of gas so there's that now I'm going to get in uh, underneath the air filter here so that we can get a look at get a look down from the top side on what um, you guys are going to be looking at as far as how the linkage should look up front There's a blue million things to take apart here, so you guys are going to have to bear with me. I wasn't as prepared this time. I should have gone ahead and had all this stuff uh, ready to disassemble, but I didn't. So you guys are just going to have to bear with it. Kick back and watch everything I'm doing. So I've got to take this plate off in order to do that. I've got three screws I've got to take off here, so hang on. Hang tight. I'd entertain you with the song and dance, but I'm a terrible singer, and I step, I step on my own feet when I dance, and I'm not in the mood to have sore feet, so just chillax for a minute while I get everything taken out here. Oh, and for anybody who doesn't have them, for anybody who doesn't have them, you want to save your life with these small engines, get these ratcheting box stand wrenches that have an open end on the other side I know it's a blue craftsman they want on clearance they wanted like hundred and twenty nine bucks or something like that for the set and uh, I was like well I didn't bump that I'm not paying that so I went out and bought a set of uh, Stanley's and while I had the Stanley's of course I always go to Sears and look at the clearance aisle a guy had just brought out a package of these guys just brought a package out 35 bucks cha-ching so I of course nabbed on to them. but anyway let's get down to business now the carbs on these are Walbro uh, they went to Walbro fairly well let's see was it uh, early 90s late 80s early 90s I think they went to the Walbro carburetors and then when you get into the vanguards and stuff like that you're going to have a uh, mounted in this area right here you'll have a fuel pump and Makuni is the fuel pump manufacturer 
both Walbro and Makuni, awesome, awesome quality. Built to last. And that's the whole thing with Briggs is that the Briggs are built to last. Unlike the Kohlers. Best Kohler I ever had could flush a five pound turd. That's all I got to say about Kohlers. <laughs> okay, I'm dragging here because I'm busy wiping my jaw. Let's see what we got here. Yep. That's a good guess. What size? 7 sixteenths. Alright. That's one side. Got one more to take off. These brackets get in the way. I'm going to fold this bracket up and over. It only attaches in two points. There's another one down here. So you can just fold it out of the way and take just the one off so that you're not having to hunt down 5,000 different nuts and bolts. And I'm going to get a 7 16 socket into the back of that. My little finger can get back in there. Okay, okay, here we go. Last one out here. This is turning out to be a long video, and I'm sorry about that. Should have been prepared and already had this off, but after I get this off, there's not going to be much else you guys need to uh, see uh, as far as the linkage and how everything goes together. So hang in there. We're just about done. Oh, I got another one. Five sixteenths. And five sixteenths. Nope, oh, smaller than five sixteenths. Reaching over, sorry. I know it's rude at the dinner table. Ah, I'm batting a thousand. Usually I get it within the first two. Looks like it's going to be three. There we go. There we are. Yay! It's like Christmas time opening up a present. Alright. <clears throat> and let me pop that air breather out. Or not the air breather, but the crankcase again. There we go. That's a nice engine. Come from uh, Mark up in Michigan. All right, let's get a good look at what goes on underneath the air cleaner. Here we go. And I'll get my flashlight so we've got a good, clear picture. All right. Now. Up front is your choke, right there. This is your throttle. The throttle is solely controlled by the governor arm. Okay. When I pull this, the governor arm moves. So everything is controlled by the governor as far as the speed. All right. Now, I was talking about idling your engine up and down to get your throttle or to get your uh, stator alternator doing what it's supposed to this screw right here that screw will increase or decrease your throttle response okay so bearing that in mind you will want to adjust that uh, according to what I was talking about earlier now this one for a main jet, I believe yep, yeah, this is one of those now, oh, I'm sorry, I take it back, this is not a wall bro, and I thought it was, the wall bros have uh, an adjustment for the main jet, this does not so, your main jet is preset at the factory, and if you're lucky, you won't have any problems with it. I'm looking all around here, making sure. Yep. Uh, Walbro has the... Uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Blah, blah, blah. Walbro has the main jet adjustment screw. Uh, the earlier Briggs carbs do not. So this is a 1995 motor. Apparently my statistics are off. And this thing was... Uh, 
then the Walbros came in after 1995. I thought they came in earlier than that. So, my bad. Um, but anyway, your tiny little spring that wraps around, you can see it here, that wraps around, that goes through this rod, goes right in that hole right there. And super easy to get it in and out. Now, you can still order these springs. I don't know if they come with the rod or not. So, how do you get those springs? How do you order them if you need them? Pretty simple. All you do, is you take all those sets of numbers either go to partstree.com put those numbers in and search for throttle linkage and you should get that spring show to show up or take it to your local dealer they can cross reference and find the correct spring for you pretty widely used um, on a number of different horsepower engines so don't sweat uh, them being out of stock on them it's a common item that breaks and this particular one's one of the early overhead valves the later overhead valves actually had the all the numbers stamped in the valve cover casing so if you're in the position that you have a engine that does not have the tag up here then you're going to look on your valve cover to see your numbers stamped on your valve cover so I guess that pretty much does it I've got 16 minutes and 43 seconds into this video that should have been about 10 minutes but with uh, everything off of here I'm going to show you here all the action that happens so you can see what's supposed to happen okay I'm pulling on the throttle and you'll see it compressed down here see as it's pulling as it's pulling do -do 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 -do. Here comes your little arm that comes into the spring, or comes into the rod for the uh, choke as it pushes. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you guys see the choke closing. Okay, here we go. As you push, the choke closes. Now, I'm going to pan up just a little bit. i got two minutes left on my battery. Okay, one minute. All right, do it again. As you push, it also pulls your throttle so since my battery's dying this is Zippo if you guys have any questions please get a hold of me let me know I'm a little slow responding right now because it's my busy season but I will get back to you this is Zippo later I'm out